doing tonight? Welcome to Top Story Weekly. That's a great crowd. Yes, yes, I mean that sincerely. Wow, look at all of you out here. How many people are here for the first time? Raise your hands. Wow, okay, all right. We got a gift basket waiting for you outside. Um, coming up right now is the part of the show where we have the best stand-up comedians working in Los Angeles today. And our next uh, uh, act is uh, one of our favorites. And in fact, this might be the last time he's gonna be performing here for quite a while because he's moved to New York City. You know him as TV's Frank from MST3K. Please give a big round of applause to Frank Conniff. <laughs> Top story, huh? Come on! That's phenomenal. Really on fire tonight, too. Really hilarious stuff. Um, I'm, I'm thirsty for ass wine. I don't know about you. Uh, I remember those commercials, uh, Ernest and Julio Gala. We will shit no wine before it's time. <laughs> that was before a lot of you were born. But, uh, <laughs> No, actually, I think the, uh, sketches like that are good for people like me because um, uh, I don't I don't actually drink alcohol anymore, and, and now I, I I don't want to even more than ever. Uh, um, I, you know, I'm not I'm not saying this to uh, milk applause or anything, but uh, I've actually been sober for 27 years. But I'm not saying that just to, to get applause. I mean, I'm not like you should admire me for that. That's not the point of me saying this, but. Uh, but I do, you know, I've been uh, sober for 27 years, but, but, but I know that I'm never more than one drink away from a fucking great time. So I keep that in mind. And then, you know, I, I, I love doing this show, and I'm always like, it's great, you know, I'll be the only comedian in the show, and, and the only stand-up comedian, and then, you know, now I have to follow Mitt Romney. I didn't know he was going to do a set in the show tonight. Uh, I love how uh, uh, the Romney campaign, you know, the debate is Wednesday, and they're, tell they're actually telling reporters, you know, Mitt has a lot of great singers that he's going to do in a debate. And that's, that's kind of a comedy 101, you know. If, if you have uh, great singers, tell people about it five days ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they don't seem, re seem really spontaneous. Uh, and real when he does it. Oh my God, that is going to be really awesome. Uh, I um, the thing is, is uh, it's weird because Mitt hasn't been um, talking about his his re religion that much. You know, he's trying to appeal to the Christian right wing, and he doesn't talk about his Mormonism. Maybe because maybe you know because it's crazy. <laughs> But uh, we should have respect for it. I mean, they have allowed um, black people into the Mormon uh, church since as far back as 1978. So that's a really, that's a great religion right there. But my, uh, uh, I always tell, I'm not, a, you know, I have a lot of atheists, a lot of comedians I know are atheists, and I'm not an atheist. I, I, I believe in a fictional God. And, uh, no, it's true because I believe, you know, as a writer and I, you know, I write fiction, I read fiction, I love fiction, I think uh, stories are a very powerful thing. Imagination is a powerful tool in life. And so if they would just admit that the, that the Bible is fiction, uh, you know, everyone would be a lot happier, I think. In fact, I think if Jesus came back and they said, uh, oh, hey, man, we've been, uh, we've based, our entire uh, lives on that on the Bible. I think he'd go, really? <laughs> that one book? What about the series of mystery novels that I wrote? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, what about in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Murder? You didn't, uh, <laughs> where I saw, I show up and I solve crimes. <laughs> it's, uh, I solve murders, come on. Um, <laughs> No, but um, I grew up uh, uh, Catholic, and I'm not a Catholic anymore, except uh, I sometimes use some of the imagery of Catholicism uh, for boners. But other than that, I, uh, <laughs> the weird thing to me is they always say, um, 
uh, you know, the whole Christianity is based on Jesus died for our sins, and so we have to devote our entire lives. Everything in our life has to be devoted to worshiping him for dying for our sins and praising him for dying of our sins. And it's just a weird thing because, you know, on the one hand, Jesus did this amazing thing, and on the other hand, he's being kind of a dick about it. <laughs> It's like, you know, okay, you help me move, but I don't owe my life to you now. Uh, um, but this is a little, uh, uh, you know, I do, I do a lot of political comedy, but the thing is, is, you know, the election's coming up and everyone's saying Obama's going to win, and that's awesome, but I'm not hedging my bets, you know. If, if like, what if Mitt Romney wins, you know, uh, then, uh, you know, my, my comedy might go a little more conservative because I don't know if you know this about me, but um, I, I, I'm incredibly shallow. And uh, <laughs> so I know this is really unethical, but you know, like Jeff Foxworthy, he's a Republican comedian. He, um, he supported Mitt Romney and endorsed him. And so I, uh, I went to see uh, Jeff Foxworthy set at the uh, UCB last week. And uh, <laughs> I know this is unethical, but I copied down a lot of his conservative Republican leaning jokes. And, and I'm going to do them, you know, to, in case Romney gets elected. And uh, so here's a few of them. <laughs> you might be a redneck. If your only experience with science is your common law wife's crystal meth lab. <laughs> the accent really sells it, don't you think? Uh, you might be a redneck if you don't want your sister using birth control while you're having sex with her. <laughs> you might be a redneck if you don't have any teeth, but you don't support Obamacare. <laughs> better the way it was originally. I fucked that one up, sorry. You might be a redneck if every time you watch your girlfriend having her state-mandated transvaginal ultrasound, you say, turn the channel, I want to watch Walker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> Walker, Texas Ranger fans here. Right? You might be a redneck if nobody can hear you when you say Obama's a Muslim because there's a white sheet over your face. <laughs> you might be a redneck if every time you go near a farm animal they use a rape whistle. <laughs> and finally, you might be a redneck if the highest grade you've ever gotten is hepatitis C. <laughs> So that's going to be my act if, uh, if Mitt Romney, oh, thank you, no, please. Uh, he's uh, he's uh, doing a one-man show uh, at the Steve Allen Theater. But uh, I, um, you know, I, and, and uh, like they said, I am uh, leaving L.A. Uh, tomorrow. I'm going to work on a show on the current TV channel with uh, John Fugelsang, who was also performed in the show. I'm very excited about it. Thank you very much. And I'm going to miss L.A. because, uh, you know, I'm a big uh, film buff, and this is the film capital of the world. In fact, I live in uh, uh, the Valley. I live uh, right across the street from one of my favorite film studios, uh, Vivid Entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> they're like the Criterion Collection of porn. And they're, uh, and they're really neighborly, like... Uh, just this morning, I went over and borrowed a cup of jizz. They're really nice <laughs> people. They were so taken with me. And, and this was like my first thing. They actually put me in a porn. Uh, well, it was a soft core. I mean, really soft core. It was called I Like You as a Friend. <laughs> the most erotic scene was the part where I was really supportive of her. Uh, but uh, before I go, I, you know, I wanted uh, to, to uh, talk about uh, Twitter and Facebook. We're all on Twitter and Facebook, right? <laughs> okay, I've got the one non-tech audience in the world. Uh, uh, we're coffee serve, Frank. Uh, that was awesome, by the way, hearing that uh, AOL uh, or the internet thing. That's like... Uh, who knew that that would be ancient one day? <laughs> That's like watching someone talking on the party line in a 40s movie, you know, going like... But, uh, 
So, uh, you know, but I think the key to the success of uh, Twitter and Facebook has been um, computers. Uh, <laughs> especially the internet. You know, the, the Twitter has been around forever. In fact, um, I have some tweets from history here. That's right, historical figures <laughs> who've tweeted, ladies and gentlemen. It's the, it's the truth. Like, for instance, here's one from, uh, well, I'm going like this so it really sells it. Uh, <laughs> Damn you, iPhone 5. See, I'm falling back this day. Uh, oh, here's a tweet from Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, just charged up San Juan Hill. Winning. <laughs> and you know, I'm fascinated by writers' tweets, because I'm a writer. And you know, I've always considered one of the most erudite, uh, wittiest writers of all times, Oscar Wilde. And uh, that's why I was a little surprised by his tweet. Ooh, we, I sure do loves me some anal sex. I mean, that's not, <laughs> not what I expected. Uh, and then here's one from, uh, from Anne Frank. Uh, no, wait till I read it to you, Boomy. <laughs> please save your booing for the end, please. Uh, this one from Anne Frank. Uh, and it's actually one of her most famous lines that was a tweet. People don't know that. Uh, all in all, deep down, I still think people are basically good at heart. And then there's hashtag sarcasm. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot, you guys have been great, thank you.